welcome to Curious Sex Ed by Sex Ed Files and Sex Ed with DB. We're real sex educators answering even realer anonymous sex ed questions. In a world that constantly encourages you to change, it's bold to just be yourself. Sexual expression and satisfaction are different for everybody, so rather than conforming to others, focus on falling in love with who you are. Lion's Den sources the very best products to help you find what you like and help you feel confident expressing your sexual desires. You can get 15% off in-store and online using code SEXEDWITHDB at lionsden.com to begin exploring everything about yourself. Follow them on social at Lion's Den Adult on Instagram and TikTok. Let's play a little fill-in-the-blank game where you have to guess what goes in the blank. Cosmopolitan Magazine called the blank the little black dress of vibrators, and Time Magazine named the blank among the top 10 most influential gadgets of all time. Even at 50 years old, the blank is still turning heads as the most recommended and best-selling massage wand in America. Any guesses? The answer is the magic wand. It's loved by millions for a reason. It's powerful and hits all the right pleasure points. Want to see what all the fuss is about? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magic wand to learn more and see how you could win your very own magic wand rechargeable. Let's talk about lube and condoms. Something important to know is that oil-based lube is not to be used with condoms because the oil can cause the condom to break or tear, which would defeat the purpose of using it. Thank goodness for Uber Lube. Uber Lube is latex compatible, so it's safe and effective to use with condoms. But wait, there's more. Dispensing two drops of Uber Lube inside a condom and a measured pump outside will increase pleasure. What are you waiting for? Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberlube.com. I'm sure you've heard the phrase bottoming before, but do you really know what it entails? Pun intended. When it comes to anal sex, there's typically a top and a bottom, and any combination of the two. The top is defined as the insertive partner, and the bottom is defined as the receptive partner. If you're interested in anal play or bottoming, the three major muscles in our butt need to be relaxed for complete and successful entry. After you've started to experiment with the tip of a finger or a butt plug with lots and lots of lube, you may want to slowly graduate to a pre-bottoming anal training routine to ensure the best experience. Enter the glass anal dilator set with three gradual dilators, small, medium, and large plugs from Future Method. And an important fun fact, an anal surgeon designed these glass dilators so you know that he's got your back and your bottom. To learn more about bottoming and the glass dilator set, go to futuremethod.com and use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at checkout. Here's an important disclaimer. Curious Sex Ed is for people 18 plus, and we are not medical professionals. What we discuss in this podcast is not medical advice. Please consult your health team for any issues that you might be having. Hello, Mariah. Happy Friday. Hello. How are you? I'm feeling real good. Um, I'm a little hungry, but I'm very (laughs) excited to eat lunch after we record this. Oh my gosh. Um, The sun is peeping out of the clouds here in Oakland, so (laughs) thank God for some sunshine. It's been not very, like, summery over here. Oh, no, I know. The weather has been really weird everywhere in California. I don't know about anywhere else, but it's been – it's nice because it's not getting as hot, but it is a gloomy summer. Yes, I want to go to the beach. I would Um, love that. No segue possible here. We're talking no. about orgasms yeah, today. That's, that's that's the thing. <laughs> We're just going to hit it. Um, yeah. Mariah, do you want to chat about the question? Absolutely. We got a really good – we got quite a few questions about orgasm, but um, I put them all in a hat, and this is the one that um, we chose. So I've never been able to have an orgasm no matter what I do. The older I get, the more frustrating it gets. What can I do? This is a fantastic question and a really, I feel like, relatable question. I've also seen this in my own question box a number of different times. And yeah, I love it. This can be frustrating. And we're going to talk hopefully we'll give some good advice. We'll see. But at at the very least, you're not going to feel alone. (laughs) 
I think we'll we'll give very good advice. Yes. Um, maybe I'm just biased, but um, I also just think that I just want to reiterate how common of a question this is. I don't think we really think about this fact, but I think even my mom has an OBGYN who gets patients. Mm. Like people come in all the time telling yeah. her this, and like not just people in their like teens, twenties, and thirties. It's like people in their fifties, people in their sixties. Yeah. Um, and there even was an entire movie about this kind of called Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. I don't know if you saw it, Mariah. I it didn't. <laughs> highly recommend. We okay. had the director on Sex Ed with DB and it was oh a fantastic gosh. episode. And uh, it stars Emma Thompson, who plays an older woman who's a widow who has never had an orgasm and she hires a sex worker. And the whole movie <sighs> takes place in a hotel room and it's fucking phenomenal. Oh, so gosh. all that is to say, older people struggle with this as well. And if you struggle and you're listening or you know someone or you've had a partner who struggles with this, you are definitely and they are definitely not alone. Yeah. Um, and before we get into the content here, we really want to shout out to our amazing bestie crew ernesto craig don michael and juan thank you so much for joining us uh and just letting you know if you want to ask more anonymous questions uh you can also write your name in there if you want if you want mm -hmm. to say who you are because we know who you are bestie <laughs> crew and we love you for that um you can go ahead and go to buymeacoffee.com slash curious sex ed for the link of the question box um and let's talk about our experience with orgasms like when we first yeah had them? Did, did we have any trouble? How do we, you know, is it easy now? Partner with, to you know, yeah. what, what goes on for us? And I actually talked about this to millions of people when I was <laughs> on the Netflix documentary, um, Prin Principles of Pleasure. We so, love that for you though. We thank you for yeah, doing that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm glad that I did it, but it, you know, it definitely caused some strife between me and my mom and I kind of felt bad about that which you we've talked about and you yeah. can relate. but I definitely started reaching orgasm without knowing what it meant or what that word was at a very early age and yeah. I you know as far back as probably my memory is it's either like five or six or seven years old um and I didn't know what it was, but I knew that it felt good. And I knew right. that it was like pretty easy for me to achieve on my own. Um, super normal thing that we really don't talk about, but kids do what feels good for them. And that includes masturbating and orgasming. And as long as they're not hurting themselves and they're doing it in private, then there's nothing wrong with that. I think like there's a lot of harmful rhetoric out there about like kids are need to be kids and like they can't be sexualized. And like, yes, that is definitely true. And at the same time, like kids have pleasure and they don't know what that means. And it doesn't mean they're weird. It just means that they are normal. <laughs> um, and in terms of now, I feel like, you know, depending on whether or not I'm using a toy, like I feel like I can reach orgasm generally pretty quickly. Um, if I'm not using a toy, then maybe it'll take like 10 or 10 minutes or longer. Yeah. Um, but there are certain toys where I can reach in 30 seconds depending sure. on my mood um, and like kind of where my mind is and what I'm th thinking and feeling. Um, but yeah, I've been pretty fortunate in that I've never really had an issue reaching orgasm. And that's great because it brings me a lot of joy and a lot of happiness and pleasure. Yeah, that's amazing. I am like the opposite. <laughs> Oh, tell me everything. <laughs> I'm like, dang, that's such a beautiful story. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? When I read this question, I was like, yeah, I get this frustration. And I think a lot of my issue, I, I wouldn't say issues with orgasming, but it, it took me a long time to connect with that. All of that, like, kind of delayed pleasure, I guess we can call it. Um, it stems back from my issues with feeling disconnected disconnected from my body because of, you know, all the, all the trauma things that yeah. we've talked about a little bit, um, specifically like religious trauma and purity culture. So right. I, yeah, I never, I, I couldn't cross like the, the barrier of like, oh, this feels good. Oh, this can continue feeling good. It, it almost felt like, oh, you're not supposed to do that sort of thing. Like that mm. was in my brain. And so, um, I think that, that made me feel like, okay, this isn't, I'm not supposed to do this sort of thing. Right. So I, I never, I really never masturbated when I was younger ever because one, I was being told like, you'll go to hell if you do. And so I right. didn't, I didn't, because I was scared. Um, so I think, 
I, I wonder like if I had explored that, um, if I would be able to achieve orgasm earlier, but mm. anyway, luckily, you know, I, I was able to kind of figure out how that works. Having my first orgasm didn't happen until after college. I wow. Think. Maybe. Sorry, ex-boyfriend. You don't even... <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So you don't even remember like reaching that peak when you were younger? No, no, wow. not at all. Interesting. Yeah, I know. To be I'm... clear though, not to interrupt you, but just oh, to yeah. share some sameness. Every time I did it, I felt extremely guilty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like there was still so much guilt and shame around yeah. it. When I'm purely thinking about like whether or not I did it because yeah. I was like, no, like the, I don't like I'm gonna – I don't care enough about the shame to not do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Because it was like such a good <laughs> feeling, but I totally relate to this idea of like, well, this is bad and like I'm being yeah. shamed for it. So I'm I'm there with you. Yeah. That that's really hard to undo, I think. Um, I feel like pretty good about it now, but yeah, I think throughout my earlier like twenties, that was really hard to undo. So Mm -hmm. I didn't, my first orgasm didn't happen until I was with a partner. Funny enough, the, my current, my current partner. So, uh, (laughs) that's good. uh, That's why. Um, and it really, the only way like I was a, I like didn't even know like what it would feel like or what it was, but I, it kind of clicked. I was like, Oh, this is it. I was like on top and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was like the first time. Um, but now, you know, I, I've explored masturbation a lot more and kind of find, you know, my own groove with things. I've definitely mm-hmm. used toys and I can achieve an orgasm with toys. Not every oh, single right. time, yeah. but that has a lot to do with like, you know, where I am mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very sensitive to my mental state or things around me. Um, my, you know, the context that I'm in, I'm very sensitive to it and it can absolutely pull me out of any sort of um, state of arousal or even kind of, I don't know, stop my desire for sex. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working through some things, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's a lifelong thing, right? It is a I lifelong think, like- thing. Yeah, and you have a really great note here about like orgasms not needing to be the main goal. Yeah. I think like I'll I'll just speak on like representation of orgasms and how easy it seems for people and then, you know, you can you can chat about like why why it's so important that we talk about like other forms of pleasure and not yeah. just orgasms. But like orgasms obviously are just like <laughs> not always what they seem in movies or porn. Yeah. Like in straight porn or really any porn, if there's a cis woman, she has this like full body orgasm. She's like <laughs> squirting everywhere sometimes and she just like moans a bunch and then she's done. And like that is not what most orgasms, I would say probably like 90 to 95 percent of orgasms yeah. actually look like. Some people's do, but most people's don't. And most cis women don't orgasm from penetrative penis vagina sex alone. In fact, around 80% of people with vulvas need or desire clitoral stimulation in order to reach orgasm. And that's like an old stat. I'm sure there's like a newer one out there that I think, you know, Dr. Lori Mintz does a lot of research Mm -hmm. on this. I'm pretty sure it's in the 90s now. (laughs) Um, But People in porn, if you really think about it, are professional orgasmers. So like yeah, they know totally. what they need in order to reach orgasm. And like sometimes they do certain things or don't do certain things to their bodies in order for them to like achieve a certain type of orgasm. And so I just don't want you to compare your orgasm to theirs, but maybe mm-hmm. like just think about what your authentic orgasm looks like and feels like. Yeah, that is really important to point out because it's so easy to see something and be like, oh, my body doesn't do that. That's mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, right. that's yeah. So I, I, I definitely have learned through experience that orgasms don't have to be the main goal. Like you can experience so much pleasure without focusing on that so much. And I think I missed out on a lot of pleasure because I was like, oh, I need a, I need an orgasm or I'm supposed to, right? That's like the formula for sex, right? Um, but it doesn't have to be. And it shouldn't be used to 
at, like as a measure to determine if you or your partner are satisfied. Um, sexual pleasure is honestly a personal experience for every single person. People like different things. Things feel good to different people. Some people don't even like reaching orgasm. It may not even feel good for some people. Mm-hmm. Um, so, And that's oh, an Easter egg, actually, because our next episode is about edging. So yes, stay that's tuned. True. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Exactly. Um, So yeah, you can have great sex without reaching orgasm. That is totally possible. And, you know, sometimes there, like I said, like I have a lot of mental things that may prevent me from orgasming. There are many things that can impact not only a person's desire for sex, but also arousal and ability to orgasm. Some of these things could be, you know, you can talk with like a health professional and if you're wanting to, but it could be several reasons like disabilities, physical pain, mental illness, certain medications, birth control, hormonal issues, age, psychological factors, especially around trauma, guilt, and shame around sex. Um, It could also be stress. Like you could literally just be stressed and you can't reach orgasm that's and that could be a day-to-day thing it can change every single day um and then someone may just have a preference to orgasm only through masturbation maybe they can only do it when they're by themselves that there's nothing wrong with that When you're traveling, you don't have access to your amazing sex goodies stash. So you start to pack your lube for sexy time in your toiletry bag. And when you open your bag back up, the lube you pack, of course, spills all over your toothbrush, makeup, and floss picks. Enter a brand new product from Uber Lube that will get your lube to your destination without spillage. They're new good to go travelers. Perfect for your purse, pocket, gym bag, or carry on luggage. The Good To Go Traveler features the same Uberlube product in a discreet aluminum traveler that comes in six colors. Try Uberlube and their Good To Go Traveler now with code SEXED with DB for 15% off at uberlube.com. Ever since getting engaged to my wonderful fiance, I've been thinking about ways to keep things fun and novel between us, but I, of course, want it to feel organic. I want to be able to feel sexy and comfortable in my body while trying something new. Thanks to Lion's Den, a new adventure I've been exploring is the world of lingerie. I never really was a big lingerie girl myself, but once I started trying on lingerie that accentuated my curves, felt super soft to the touch, and made me look in the mirror and felt wildly confident in my skin, that changed pretty quickly. Plus, when I searched for what I might like on Lion's Den's website, I saw models that actually looked like me. They were curvy and thick and voluptuous, and it made all the difference to see models that have my body type. Want to join me in my new lingerie chapter? Right now, you can use code SEXED with DB for 15% off your purchase in store and online at lionsden.com. Follow them on social media at Lions Den Adult on IG and TikTok for exclusive offers, deals, and giveaways. If you're tired of hearing the same old judgmental, shaming financial advice about buying too many lattes from old white men who conveniently ignore issues like systemic oppression, it's time to join us on Financial Feminist. I'm Tori Dunlap, globally recognized money speaker and educator, and I'm a part of a new guard of financial educators. On Financial Feminist, we don't just talk about money. We talk about the ways women are affected differently by money. We're feminist first, acknowledging that your financial savviness has less to do with your weekly coffee order and everything to do with the fact that we live in a patriarchal society that gatekeeps women, people of color, and other minorities out of conversations and education about money. With fascinating guests like Nadia Okamoto, Maya Vander, Justin Baldoni, Christy Carlson Romano, Queen Herbie, and more, we dive into topics like menstrual justice, the investing gap, diet culture, the psychology of money, and more. Plus, you get bi-weekly how-to episodes like how to start investing or how I saved $100,000 at age 25. We're smashing the patriarchy and getting rich one episode at a time. Subscribe to Financial Feminist wherever you're listening now. When it comes to anal sex, what comes to mind? If you're a beginner like so many of us out there, maybe you feel scared, unsure, or just plain uneducated. 
Future Method can help with that. Founded by a doctor and anal sex expert, Future Method develops science-backed products and non-judgmental doctor-led education to maximize pleasure, eliminate injury, and empower the way people choose to play in the bedroom. They even have a blog started by the gay community and now for everyone that puts education at the forefront on topics both popular and taboo. Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at futuremethod.com. When you think about the words pleasure and power, what comes to mind? If you're a fan, you know my answer will always be the magic wand. As the world's first ever and best-selling massage wand, the magic wand's familiar shape and legendary power have made magic wand a cultural icon. Revered by millions, it transcends planes of culture and gender. Its impact is so great that Time Magazine included it on its list of the most influential gadgets of all time. Want to get in on the fun? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magic wand to learn more and see how you could win your very own magic wand. Yeah, and I, th- I feel like, you know, there's this whole idea of, okay, well, the orgasm gap exists, right? Mm-hmm. Which is basically like the statistical disparity between like cis women not having enough orgasms as cis men. Um, queer people like have more orgasms because they've had to figure out their own cultural yeah. scripts and had to figure out like, you know, better communication and they have different representations in media and all these things. Um, but like, that doesn't mean that you absolutely need to reach orgasm every right. single time. Like yeah. you should listen if you want to, then that's great. And you should be able to have a conversation with your partner about like, Hey, this is what feels good for me. Hey, this is how I orgasm. Yeah. Um, but if you're not really like wanting that, if you're not in the headspace, don't pressure yourself to do that. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the science of like what actually is an orgasm because I think that's the question that a lot of people write into me at least through sex with DBs. Like I think I've reached an orgasm, but I'm just not really sure. Like, Mm -hmm. is it just pleasure? Like what, like what should I be looking out for? If you're like a first timer who has not, who feels like you have not received or achieved orgasm, here's what a basic understanding of an orgasm is. So it's like a brief sometimes longer but usually like a few seconds long of sexual excitement and it really does feel like this fill up of pressure and a release of that pressure when it gets to the fullest point and during an orgasm people may experience a really really intense like rush of pleasure to the genitals throughout the body but it could feel really different for each person and i think a a way to really consider like how to connect to your like body if you're trying to figure out if you're doing this is like is your heart beating quick? Because mm-hmm. like literally an orgasm is like a rush of blood yeah. um, and like blood is pumping at like a quicker rate during this peak. Um, and like the vulva, for example, can grow up to like 300% during arousal. Mm-hmm. And so if you fe- like really check in with your body, like feel your body, like put your yep. hand on your vulva, if you have a vulva, is it bigger? Like if you have a penis it can feel a little different because maybe you're someone who, like most people, ejaculates during orgasm, but some people don't, right? And so I think like if you're listening and you have a penis, maybe you know for sure like when you've had an orgasm, but if you're trying to reach a stronger orgasm, right? Say your, your orgasm isn't as strong as you want it to be, connect with your body. Is your heart beating super fast? Are you kind of like using the same like porn you always use or the same thing or are there other kind of routines that maybe you can try to like shift the way in which your orgasm comes um because again it can be really different depending on who you are and what your body and mind are kind of telling you and feeling yeah totally and there are even there are different types of orgasms there's so many um and yeah, there. I, another thing to add to your list is also um, like muscle contractions. That's also another sign that you have indeed yes. had an orgasm. But just to say that there are there are so many different ways not only to experience pleasure, but also to have an orgasm. There's clitoral orgasms. There's a penis orgasm, a blended orgasm, anal orgasm. The, the list goes on. So um, you're not – you have a lot of options, right? It, how you get there, how you achieve that, that's a whole other episode. So, yes. uh, you know, we're not going to get into it now. But just know that there are so many options. You don't have to just, like, focus on one part of the body if you don't want yes. to. totally. Um, all right. So let's so let's talk a little bit about the how, like, things you can try to achieve an orgasm, especially if you're struggling. Um, you know, maybe you've tried some of this stuff. Maybe you haven't. 
a good place to start is definitely explore your own body. Discover what feels good to you. Um, and maybe it's not just your genitals. Um, you can explore with different types of stimulation, explore different erogenous zones like the nipples, your neck, your stomach, or your like inner thighs. And try and just get really, really familiar with your own body. This can, you know, not only help you in your own practice of self-pleasure, but it's also really helpful so you can communicate it like or communicate it to a partner, right? So you can tell them what feels good. And this can increase your chances of reaching an orgasm, hopefully. <laughs> um, if you're with a partner and you know, you're having sex and you're wanting to have an orgasm, have some sort of open and honest communication or discussion, uh, maybe talk about like, this doesn't feel good. I know I'm not going to orgasm this way. Um, or maybe you try a different position and you and your partner can hopefully come to some sort of solution if you, or just, you can just try different techniques, right? Again, try and remove the pressure of having to orgasm and instead just have fun. Like just try things because it can feel good. Just, just for funsies. Just uh, for funsies. Just for funsies. Um, anxiety and stress can interfere a lot with sexual pleasure, as we've said. So try maybe beforehand engaging in some relaxation techniques, maybe some mindfulness, some deep breathing, or even meditation because the more present you are, the more connected you are to your body. This can even be like setting up your space, putting on mm -hmm. some candles, finding a, a scheduled quiet time for solo play. Like these are things that can hopefully get you into your body and get you into like support you as you get into the mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really think that this piece about medication should not be like can't be overstated. Like this mm -hmm. is a really popular reason why people have trouble um, and struggle with reaching orgasm and, and like quote getting in the mood or feeling yeah. like your libido is low. Um, I know for myself, like I was put on the birth control pill, like at a very young age, like, I don't know, like 15 or 16. And that really did impact like a lot of things about my like libido and like me just not being in the mood and me not being able to like get as much pleasure. And I know for sure, like statistically speak, like science backed information is there about this as well as anecdotally, like SSRIs, like antidepressants can definitely cause a like, it can influence your libido and your ability to reach orgasm. Yeah. So just know that like that is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And if you are someone who – and a lot of people are on medication and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But just know that like that is a real thing that can happen and those are real side effects. Yeah. Um, but if you're kind of wanting to – whether or not you're on medication, if you're wanting to try actual techniques to like try to reach orgasm if you haven't, really, really cannot emphasize the importance of sex toys. <laughs> I think like sex toys exist so that we get pleasure, we get happiness, and we get it quickly, usually. Um, it really depends on the kind of toy. I know for sure like a magic wand is yes, I am I am sponsored by them. And they're also <laughs> one of my favorite toys of all time because yeah. that shit is powerful. And like if you are someone with a vulva, that is a really fantastic option. Um, if you're someone with a penis, considering a fleshlight or something that can give you a lot of pressure with a lot of lubricant can also be a really, really great toy or yeah. a vibrating cock ring or something like that. I know the Tanga egg is also a very popular mm -hmm. penis centered sex toy. So consider doing some research on those. Um, check out Lion's Den, also another sponsor of mine. <laughs> um, you can get some percentage off. Go to sexedwithdb.com slash discounts and buy yes. all the sex toys your heart desires for 15% off. Um, and lube. Lube really cannot be it, – it, it's fantastic. And a lot yeah. of people, regardless of the genitals that you have, um, can get dry Mm -hmm. in the genitals and that can prevent you from reaching orgasm. There needs to be enough lubrication and not as much friction in order for you sometimes to be able to reach orgasm. So check out lube, figure out what feels really good for you. And the last thing that I'm going to say is porn and erotica. Mm, yeah. Um I was never like a romance novel person and I kind of like recently discovered them and I I haven't read too many of them, but like 
those things are great and can really, really like get your mind stimulated. And when your mind is connecting to your body, then that can allow you to receive the pleasure that you want and potentially reach orgasm. Um, Dipsy is also an audio erotica app that I highly recommend you checking. So good. Um, And so I think like really just kind of explore with these different kind of tools to help you it's, it's one piece of the puzzle, right? Like all yeah. of these pieces have to connect. And while you shouldn't put pressure on yourself, um, if you are wanting to reach orgasm and you're finding that you're not really able to, don't be afraid to really seek that extra support and professional help. If there's a prof- like a healthcare professional who specializes in sexual health or pain during sex or vulvodynia or, you know, a pelvic floor PT, a uh, sex therapist, they can really assess like what might be going on with you. Yeah. Maybe you need a mental health therapist. Maybe you need a different kind of therapist. But whether it's physical, psycho- like psychological, physiological, um, that might be affecting this ability to orgasm, they can give you like really specific advice. Um, and just know that you're not alone. Once again, a lot of people have this experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think to end this episode, um, just last thing, be kind and patient to yourself throughout the process. Uh, there's no there's no specific timeline for achieving an orgasm. So just take your time. It's okay like to just try and figure things out. I totally understand the frustration. It sounds like this particular person with their question, maybe they have been trying it for a long time and they're mm-hmm. like, I'm over this. Why can't I do this? So that that's understandable. But even so, still be kind to yourself because as you've learned, there are so many things that can affect a person's ability to orgasm. Some of them are completely out of your control, um, but there are things that you can do to try and to try and help with it. So yeah. that's all and, I got to say. <laughs> uh, and and that's it. Yeah. Um, the, just the one more like brief note, and maybe this is like a separate episode, but I do want to offer the idea of there are people out there who are anorgasmic, meaning they physically mm-hmm. cannot achieve orgasm. Yeah. And I just want to say like if you are someone who's tried everything and you've talked to the health professionals and you've tried everything that we're talking about, like consider that this might be something that you have and really think about like what what does that mean for me are there other ways that can fulfill me yeah. and give me pleasure and joy if orgasm is not going to be one of those ways and and what does that look like for you mm-hmm. and so i just want to offer like again you are not alone there are people who experience that and just know that there are plenty of other ways to engage in pleasure and happiness for your body and mind amen <laughs>